Introduction Pinky, look at this eucalyptus tree. It is so tall. You are right, Didi. But do you know that in such tall trees, all nutrients are travelled by diffusion and active transport like small trees? Yes, but these are not only the means of transport. Actually, both of these processes are extremely slow and take a lot of time. There are some other processes also, which also take place. What are those other processes? We will discuss them now. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define mass flow or bulk flow system Explain the apoplast and symplast pathways Describe the root pressure theory Describe the transpiration pull theory. Explain the transpiration process. Long distance transport of water. Introduction. Friends, as we all know that over small distances, substances move by diffusion and by cytoplasmic streaming, supplemented by active transport. Long distance transport of substances within a plant cannot be by diffusion alone. Diffusion is a slow process. It can account for only short distance movement of molecules. For example, the movement of a molecule across a typical plant cell takes approximately 2.5 seconds. Some trees are up to 50 feet tall. So think how many years it would take for the movement of molecules over a distance of 25 to 30 feet within a plant by diffusion alone? Sometimes the sites of production or absorption and sites of storage are too far from each other. Diffusion or active transport would not suffice. Mass or bulk flow system In long trees, Special long-distance transport systems become necessary so as to move substances across long distances and at a much faster rate. Water, minerals and food are generally moved by a mass or bulk flow system. Mass flow is the movement of substances in bulk or en masse from one point to another as a result of pressure differences between the two points. It is a characteristic of mass flow that substances, whether in solution or in suspension, are swept along at the same pace as in a flowing river. This is unlike diffusion, where different substances move independently depending on their concentration gradients. Bulk flow can be achieved either through a positive hydrostatic pressure gradient, example a garden hose, or a negative hydrostatic pressure gradient, example, suction through a straw. The bulk movement of substances through the conducting or vascular tissues of plants is called translocation. The higher plants have highly specialized vascular tissues, xylem and phloem. Xylem is associated with translocation of mainly water, mineral salts, some organic nitrogen and hormones from roots to the aerial parts of the plants. The phloem translocates a variety of organic and inorganic solutes, mainly from the leaves to other parts of the plants. How do plants absorb water? Now let us understand how plants absorb water. The roots absorb most of the water that goes into plants. That is why we give water to the soil and not on the leaves. The responsibility of absorption of water and minerals is more specifically the function of the root hairs that are present in millions at the tips of the roots. Root hairs are thin-walled, slender extensions of root epidermal cells that greatly increase the surface area for absorption. Water is absorbed along with mineral solutes by the root hairs, purely by diffusion. Once water is absorbed by the root hairs, it can move deeper into root layers by two distinct pathways. Apoplast pathway 
and Symplast pathway. We will know them in detail in the next few screens. Apoplast pathway. The apoplast is the system of adjacent cell walls that is continuous throughout the plant, except at the Casparian strips of the endodermis in the roots. The apoplastic movement of water occurs exclusively through the intercellular spaces and the walls of the cells. Movement through the apoplast does not involve crossing the cell membrane. This movement is dependent on the gradient. The apoplast does not provide any barrier to water movement and water movement is through mass flow. As water evaporates into the intercellular spaces or the atmosphere, tension develops in the continuous stream of water in the apoplast. Hence, mass flow of water occurs due to the adhesive and coercive properties of water. Symplast pathway The other pathway is Symplast pathway. The symplastic system is the system of interconnected protoplasts. Neighboring cells are connected through cytoplasmic strands that extend through plasmodesmata. During symplastic movement, the water travels through the cells, their cytoplasm. Intercellular movement is through the plasmodesmata. Water has to enter the cells through the cell membrane, hence the movement is relatively slower. Movement is again down a potential gradient. Symplastic movement may be aided by cytoplasmic streaming. Cytoplasmic streaming is observed in cells of the hydrilla leaf. The movement of chloroplast due to streaming is easily visible. Apoplast and symplast pathways Most of the water flow in the roots occurs via the apoplast since the cortical cells are closely packed and hence offer no resistance to water movement. However, the inner boundary of the cortex, the endodermis, is impervious to water because of a band of suburized matrix called the Casparian strip. Water molecules are unable to penetrate the layer, so they are directed to wall regions that are not suburized into the cells proper through the membranes. The water then moves through the symplast and again crosses a membrane to reach the cells of the xylem. The movement of water through the root layer is ultimately symplastic in the endodermis. This is the only way water and other solutes can enter the vascular cylinder. Once inside the xylem, water is again free to move between cells as well as through them. In young roots, water enters directly into the xylem vessel and or tracheids. These are non-living conduits and so are parts of the apoplast. Do you know that some plants have additional structures associated with them that help in water and mineral absorption? A mycorrhiza is a symbiotic association of a fungus with a root system. The fungal filaments form a network around the young root or they penetrate the root cells. The hyphae have a very large surface area that absorb mineral ions and water from the soil from a much larger volume of soil that perhaps a root cannot do. The fungus provides minerals and waters to the roots. In turn, the roots provide sugars and nitrogen-containing compounds to the mycorrhizae. Some plants have an obligate association with the mycorrhizae. For example, pinus seeds cannot germinate and establish without the presence of mycorrhizae. Root Pressure Theory Till now we have learnt that how plants absorb water from the soil and move it into the vascular tissues. Now we will learn how this water is transported to various parts of the plant. Various ions from the soil are actively transported into the vascular tissues of the roots. Water follows its potential gradient and increases the pressure inside the xylem. 
This positive pressure is called root pressure and can be responsible for pushing up water to small heights in the stem. Effects of root pressure is observable at night and early morning when evaporation is low and excess water collects in the form of droplets around special openings of veins near the tip of grass blades and leaves of many herbaceous parts. Such water loss in its liquid phase is known as guttation. The greatest contribution of root pressure may be to re-establish the continuous chains of water molecules in the xylem which often break under the enormous tensions created by transpiration. Root pressure does not account for the majority of water transport. Most plants meet their need by transpiratory pull. Transpiration Pull Theory In Transpiration Pull Theory, most researchers agree that water is mainly pulled through the plant and that the driving force for this process is transpiration from the leaves. This is also referred to as the Cohesion Tension Transpiration Pull Model of Water Transport. Water is transient in plants. Less than 1% of the water reaching the leaves is used in photosynthesis and plant growth. Most of it is lost through the stomata in the leaves. The water loss is known as transpiration. Transpiration So far we have learnt about water flow pathways and related theories. We now move on to the next topic of this module. Transpiration Transpiration is the Evaporative loss of water by plants. It occurs mainly through the stomata in the leaves. Besides the loss of water vapor in transpiration, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the leaf also occurs through pores called stomata. Normally stomata open in the daytime and close during the night. The immediate cause of the opening or closing of the stomata is a change in the turgidity of the guard cells. The inner wall of each guard cell towards the pore or stomatal aperture is thick and elastic. When turgidity increases within the two guard cells flanking each stomatal aperture or pore, the thin outer walls bulge out and force the inner walls into a crescent shape. The opening of the stomata is also aided due to the orientation of the microfibrils in the cell walls of the guard cells. Cellulose microfibrils are oriented radially rather than longitudinally, making it easier for the stoma to open. When the guard cells lose turgor due to water loss or water stress, the elastic inner walls regain their original shape. The guard cells become flaccid and the stoma closes. Usually the lower surface of a dorsiventral or often Dicotyle denuous leaf has a greater number of stomata, while in an isobilateral or often monocotyle denuous leaf, they are about equal on both surfaces. Transpiration is affected by several external factors like temperature, light, humidity, wind speed. Plant factors that affect transpiration include number and distribution of stomata, number of stomata open, water status of the plant, canopy structure, etc. Do you know that the transpiration-driven accent of the xylem sap depends mainly on some physical properties of water? These are cohesion, adhesion and surface tension. Cohesion is the mutual attraction between water molecules. Adhesion is the attraction of water molecules to polar surfaces such as the surface of tracheary elements. And in surface tension, the water molecules are attracted to each other in the liquid phase more than to water in the gas phase. These properties give water high tensile strength, which is an ability to resist a pulling force, and high capillarity, which is an ability to rise in thin tubes. In plants, capillarity is aided by the small diameter of the tracheary elements, the trachids and vessel elements. Let us take a look on the advantages of transpiration in plants. 
it creates transpiration pull for absorption and transport of plants. It supplies water for photosynthesis. It transports minerals from the soil to all parts of the plant. It cools leaf surface sometimes 10 to 15 degrees by evaporating cooling. It maintains the shape and structure of the plants by keeping cells turgid. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Long distance transport of substances within a plant cannot be done by diffusion alone. Diffusion is a slow process. Mass flow is the movement of substances in bulk or en mass from one point to another as a result of pressure differences between the two points. The bulk movement of substances through the conducting of vascular tissues of plants is called translocation. Xylem is associated with translocation of mainly water, mineral salts, some organic nitrogen and hormones from roots to the aerial parts of the plants. The phloem translocates a variety of organic and inorganic solutes, mainly from the leaves to other parts of the plants. Once water is absorbed by the root hairs, it can move deeper into root layers by two distinct pathways, apoplast pathway and symplast pathway. Various ions from the soil are actively transported into the vascular tissues of the roots. Water follows its potential gradient and increases the pressure inside the xylem. Water is mainly pulled through the plant and that the driving force for this process is transpiration from the leaves. This is referred to as the cohesion tension transpiration pull model of water transport. Transpiration is an evaporative loss of water by plants. It occurs mainly through the stomata in the leaves. The transpiration-driven ascent of xylem sap depends mainly on the adhesion, cohesion and surface tension properties of water.